everybody welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you an in-depth video on how i take notes on my ipad for university i also just want to say thank you to first rate tutors for partnering with me on this video i will talk about them a little bit later on i got this ipad for my birthday you might have seen my video where i opened it and did an unboxing ever since i went to university i've been using this to take my notes on and honestly it's changed my life i find paperless so much easier and lighter obviously because i don't have to carry folders and loads of paper to lectures or seminars or anything also so it means everything's in one place. Everything I need is in this little device. <laughs> it also syncs to my phone, so then if I'm on the bus or something, then I can read through my notes if I need to. And also, if I forgot to bring my iPad to a seminar, then I at least have notes that I may have done in preparation for the seminar on my phone, so I'm not completely stranded. <laughs> I do find that writing up lectures on my iPad with an Apple Pencil takes a lot longer than just typing, but I also find that they're a lot nicer to look back on in the future. I find that I can revise from those kinds of notes a lot more easily than just typed Font. I don't know why, that's just me personally, everyone's different of course. Okay, so first of all I want to talk about the equipment that I use. Equipment, I don't know if you want to call it that. This is my iPad as I've already shown you and I believe that this is the 128GB 2019 7th generation iPad. I also have it in gold, you can just sort of see a little bit through there that it's gold. And then this case that I have on is from Amazon, I'll link everything down below for you. Then I also have an Apple Pencil, I have the first generation Apple Pencil because it's the one that works with this iPad. And here it is, it's literally just an Apple Pencil. I also bought this little grip for it because I was finding that I was just slipping off when I was trying to write and this has changed the game for me. I just bought a pack of three off Amazon which again I'll link down below for you but they just allow me to write a lot more easily. And then I keep this in this little case which just looks like this. It's very simple but it does the exact job that I wanted it to do. I can pop my little Apple pencil in there and then it also has spaces for nibs but I find that those little gaps for the spare nibs are a bit big and I just can't really get them out again. So I just put my spare nib in this pocket over here which you can zip up and then it's a bit more secure. I just find this really helpful helpful for safely carrying my Apple Pencil to and from university. Also, if I'm at an in-person seminar or lecture, I will usually type my notes. So this is the keyboard that I use. This is a Logitech one, Bluetooth keyboard. It's really light and easy to carry around with me so that I can take my notes wherever I am. And since I haven't had many in-person seminars or lectures so far this year, that hasn't really been what I've been using the majority of the time. But when I'm in person, I find it a lot easier to keep up with the lecture if I'm typing than if I'm writing, because otherwise I just get too far behind. I'll also leave the screen protector I have for my iPad down down below if you want to know which one I have. The app that I use for taking notes is called Notability. You probably have heard of this already. I was trying to decide between Good Notes and Notability and I watched a few videos on it and decided on Notability and honestly I love it. Really glad that I chose Notability and now I'm going to show you how I take my notes. Okay I've just moved over so that I can put the screen up here for you and so you can see what I'm doing. So when you open the Notability app this is the screen that you'll see and if you go into settings then you can change your sort of settings <laughs> obviously. So I have it set on light at the moment, but you can choose dark, dark blue, or jet black. But I personally find that light is the nicest one. You can also change the way your subjects look. So if you have colourful subjects on, then it will look like that. And if you turn that off, then it will look something like that. And I personally prefer it like that. I just think it looks a bit cleaner and neater. Yeah, you can just play around with all your different settings. You can choose whether you want the pages to be seamless or single page. You can choose what colour you want your paper to be and whether you want lines, squares, dotted, all of that kind of stuff. And I think it's just fun to sort of play around with the settings and choose what works for you. You can also create divides of subjects and folders. So I currently have two folders which are semester one and semester two and then within each folder I have all of my different modules so all the different subjects and then within a subject you can have different notes as you can see. If you want to add a new folder or divider as they call it you just go to this add button and click divider. I'm going to call it YouTube and then you can just go into that and add a new subject except it's gone in the wrong place so I'm just going to type something and then move it into the correct folder. So that's basically the rundown on how to create your subjects and your folders. It just helps me to stay so organized with all of my different modules and have everything in their separate places. So to make a new note you just need to go to this button in the corner up here and then you get a screen that looks like this. You can change the paper if you go to these three little dots and I personally like the thinnest lines but you can choose the thickness of the lines or squares or dots. Okay so once you've set up your page the way you want to have it you can choose what pen you want to use. So you have have text, pen, highlighter, rubber, this like lasso tool which I'll talk about a little bit later and then just the normal select so you can like go through the page without doing anything. So I'm going to show you a bit more detail about the actual pens. When you click on the pens you can see that you can choose which thickness you want so there's this like mid one, really thick, thinner, 
really you just choose whatever works for you i tend to change between the thicknesses depending on what i need you can also decide what type of pen you want so there's monoline this is like a pen so if i use a thicker pen you'll be able to see that the thickness of it depends on how hard you press you can also choose to have a dashed line if you want which will look like that or you can have a dotted line which looks more like this so of course you can choose the colors that you want to use and there are sort of two screens i think of colors that come with the app and then i added a few more of my own colors so the way that i found the colors I wanted was I went to this little plus button here and you can move this thing around to choose a color or you can type in a hex code so I basically just looked up on google neutral color hex codes and it came up with a bunch of different colors that I could choose from and I just chose the ones that I thought would work for my color scheme that I was kind of going for this is pretty much the same for the highlighter again you can choose what thickness you want you can choose what type of pen you want and you can choose what color you want so for both of these you can choose your favorites so that can be favorite thicknesses types of pen and colors and basically what you do is you go into this you sort of select uh i don't know maybe i want this green as a favorite and i want it this thickness with this type of pen i just click favorites okay well i've already got too many favorites and i can't add any more but when you do click favorites they turn up on this thing here which i'm moving around and it basically just means that it's really convenient for you to click on whichever type of pen that you want at that time and it avoids you having to sort of go in and change it all the time and it's just a bit less of a faff and i found it to be a lifesaver because i didn't realize you could do this at first and it's definitely changed the game it saves so much time so for the rubber you can do a similar thing you can choose what kind of thickness you want and then you can also choose whether you want to do whole or partial if you do whole then i'll show you what it would look like so you've sort of drawn something and then if you use the whole rubber then it will just get rid of the whole thing whereas if you draw something and then use partial it will get rid of it in parts and you can choose again the thickness that you want it to rub out so i could rub it out more thickly so i've already talked to you about hex codes and how to choose which colors you want but i thought i'd just talk to you a bit about my color scheme so i use this brown shade here for titles and then i will highlight it in this brown highlighter and underline it with a brown line like this and just so you know if you draw a line and it's like wonky you can hold down and it will straighten up and then you can move it back and forth like this and you can also do that for shapes so there's a circle and it will straighten out and you can adjust the size and then for subtitles i use blue and i write that in capital letters and then i highlight it in this blue pen and then for main body of writing i use this like beige color and then i highlight key things occasionally in this color i also always highlight the little bullet point dots for keywords i'll use this pink and then i'll highlight them in the matching pink color again if i'm doing dates or names of key people or like theorists or something i use green and then highlight that in green you're getting the gist <laughs> and then for examples sometimes i'll use this lighter beige color and highlight anything i need to in the matching light beige color so that's a bit of a rundown on my color scheme i personally really like having a color scheme i think it helps me to understand my notes better and if i'm looking for a particular date or person i know i need to look for green if i'm looking for a keyword i look for pink now i'm going to give you a little bit of insight into tools and hacks that i like to use things that might help you out too so first of all is a very obvious one but you can zoom in if you want to make it more accurate and this really helps me out because i am definitely a perfectionist when it comes to my notes which is very frustrating because it means it takes longer if you are like that too and you've got a letter i don't know like d but it's really bugging you that you've drawn it without joining it up <laughs> then you can zoom in and join it up. That was a really bad example. And also if you are wanting to write your notes on this sort of thinner lined paper, then sometimes it can be a bit small to do it from this far away. So zooming in just helps for you to be able to see it a bit more easily. So you want to draw a text box, then all you have to do is click on this T for text box, and then you can click on diagonally draw text box just there, and it will just allow you to draw a text box. And then once you've drawn the text box, you can just type in it, whatever you want to type. So yeah, you can either do it like that, or you can write normal text on the lines like this another really cool thing you can do if you click this little plus button is add in these sticky notes and you can choose what type of paper you want you can also scan in documents which is really useful if you've got sort of a handout from a lecture or something that you want to put into your notes and you can take photos as well and you can also import photos from your photo library i do this all the time if i want to take a screenshot off of a lecture so i will just screenshot it on my laptop airdrop it to my ipad and then i can put it in from my photo library this is a little syllable tree <laughs> from one of my lectures so yeah i can import that and then i can use the pencil tool and i can annotate it if i want another really useful thing that i like to do is if you have a bit of writing or something and you want to move it or it's in the wrong place or you want to change its size then you can use this lasso tool lasso tool i don't know what it's called that i showed you earlier and you can highlight it like this and then change the size or move it around on the page you can also change it from this box setting to the sort of more lasso tool type setting 
and draw the line around it that you want which just helps you to be a bit more sort of specific and then you can again change the size and move it around another useful thing that you can do is import readings and stuff to your ipad so that you can highlight them and write annotations so sometimes if i've got a reading on my laptop and i want to engage with it a bit more then i will airdrop it or email it to my ipad as a pdf and then i can just import it into notability and that just means it's a lot easier for you to work with the reading hi guys i'm just interrupting this video really quickly because i want to talk to you about first rate tutors if you don't know what they are first rate tutors are an education company who have recently created a new online course for aqa english language and literature gcse i can imagine this year with covid it's been really hard for you to stay on top of revision and stay motivated and also i feel like with online classes maybe you haven't been able to get as much information out of your classes as you maybe wanted to so i feel like that's where first rate tutors is really going to help you out this course basically covers everything you'll need for the two exams so i'm just going to take you through what the course actually looks like so that you have a bit more of an idea of what it's like before signing up so when you go into the course this is the page that you'll see so you can see there are tons of sections that she's got for you this course is run by barbara who is a trained english literature and english language teacher and tutor so you're in good hands you can see that at the start of the course she gives you general information for english language and english literature exams gives you information about concepts terminology and even tells you how to write an essay and then she goes into detail with several of the texts that you'll need for english literature then after that she goes over both the love and relationships and power and conflict sections of the poetry anthology and also later on even goes over unseen poetry then for english language she goes over paper one and paper two and then even gives information about how to approach the spoken assessment part of the exam and throughout this course she's giving you loads of model answers practice questions even ready-made revision resources which is so helpful so you can just see that this course covers everything you need to know it's what's going to help you get those good grades if you are feeling behind so yeah if you are interested in this course i will leave a link for you down below in the description and let's get back to the video so yeah i think that's pretty much everything that i wanted to cover in today's video i really hope it's been helpful i just kind of wanted to tell you guys my tips and how i like to make my notes on my ipad because i find it so much easier than writing notes on paper and i will sort of bring a pad of paper to a lecture with me just in case but i usually do most things on my ipad i really hope you have found this video useful or if you've enjoyed it i would love for you to subscribe to my channel give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and yeah i think that's pretty much everything and i will see you in my next video bye